I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that in the latter days upon this servant, long after skin room shall destroy this body. In my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself and not another. For the Lord is gay, and the Lord is taken away. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The earth is the Lord's in all of its fullness. The world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, established it upon the waters. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? It's the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift up ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. 
Hear, O oh Lord, when I cry with my voice. Hear my mercy, have mercy upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me. O oh God of my salvation, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your ways, O oh Lord. Lead me in a smooth place because of my enemies. Do not deliver me the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me, such as breathes out violence. I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say. them 
which are asleep, and that ye slumber not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring him with him. I'm ready to First Thessalonians 13 through 14. May the Lord have a blessing to read and hear the other words. We'll now have a prayer by Pastor Carl. Let us pray, Father, we do thank you. We do come before your presence even on today. God, we thank you for this life of Julia. God, we pray even now that we realize that he is a better hand. He in a better place. But this is not our home. We just appear to travel through. But God, we thank you that you have went away and prepared a place for us. That we can live everlasting with you. That when there's no more sickness and no more pain. God, we thank you for the heavenly place that you have prepared for us. God, we have a reason to rejoice. He's no more longer here with us suffering and going through pain and agony. But he in peace and joy and happiness. And God, we do thank you. We pray now for the strength of these thy people that are here. These sisters, these brothers, these relatives. God, give us the strength to bear and go through. Hallelujah. We're going to be sad. We're going to miss him. But God, we do thank you that he's in a better place. Hallelujah. He in our safety. And we realize that we all have to come to this point. We all have to leave him. Oh God, oh God. And we thank you for all that you now strengthen us. Now bless us. Bless the word that your presence be great here today. That the comfort of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, strengthen these thy people. And God, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor belongs to thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. acknowledgments and condolences sent thus far on behalf of Anderson Jackson Jr. affectionately known as our precious Jr. To the family of Anderson Jackson Jr. for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved we have a building of God a house not made with hands eternal in heaven the new Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church family extends their condolences to you and your family. Our hearts and prayers are with you in your hour of bereavement. May God continue to keep you in his good graces and draw you closer to one another. Perfectly submitted, Reverend T. Brian Hill, Senior Pastor. To the family of Anderson Jackson Jr., the New Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church Board, Mother's Board, wishes to express their sympathy in the passing of your loved one to Mother Laquita Jackson and the family. God loves you and he will not leave you. He has called your loved one home to him. We are asking him to lead and guide you through this journey. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Psalms 121, 1 and 2. We are praying with you and for you. And the peace of God, which passes all of understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Prayerfully submitted, Mother, First Lady, Juanita Hill, President. Mother, Deborah Brown, Vice President. To the family of Anderson Jackson, the new Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church Usher Board wishes to express their sympathy to Shireen, Tootsie Jackson, and family in your time of bereavement. May God grant you comfort at this difficult time. Trust in him. He will deliver you. We are here to support you, and we will continue to pray for you and your family. Prayerfully submitted. 
Trustee Ann Wright, President, Sister Pearlie Williams, Vice President. To the family of Madison Jackson, the new Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church Sanctuary Choir wishes to express their deepest sympathy to Dorothy Jackson and family in your time of bereavement. Our prayer is that the Lord will give you strength when you are weak and comfort when you feel sorrow. God in his infinite wisdom knows what is best and he can do all things but help. Trust in him and allow him to help bring you through your sadness. Prayer we submitted, Sister Kayla Hill, President, Sister Salacia Ellis, Vice President. To the family of Anderson Jackson, it is with sincere sympathy that I extend my condolences to the entire family during this time of grief. No one can trace the hand of God, but with certainty we can trust God's heart. During this final tribute of love, God speaks through his servants as it were just for you. I extend to you my deepest condolences and prayers and know that I am here to provide you with comfort and support during this period of bereavement. Sincerely, Patty Jo Gibson King, School City of East Chicago, School Board Trustee. Witnessing Church of God in Christ to the family of Anderson Jackson Jr. On behalf of Pastor Eddie B. and First Lady Carolyn Cobb and the Witnessing Church, along with the Cobb family, on this day, we want to celebrate with you the life of your dear brother, Anderson Jr. We want you to know that God never makes a mistake. So we encourage you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might at this time we are praying for the entire Jackson family. We know that you all have some good memories of your loved one that you can keep in your heart of him. He has played a very important part in his family and other people's lives. He was a friend to so many. His life will never be forgotten. There is no earthly sorrow that heaven cannot heal. The Bible in Revelation 21.4 and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crime, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Years ago, he attended Unity, C-O-G-I-C, under the leadership of Pastor T.J. Kapru, who had lots of members with him going to churches singing, out to dinner, and enjoying each other. Pastor Eddie and Carolyn Kyle and the witnessing COGIC church family stand in prayer with and for the Jackson family. We are just a phone call away. We love and will keep you in our prayers. Mr. Jackson will be truly missed by his family, members, and friends. Done by the order of the witnessing COGIC on this day of March 23rd, 2024. We have a card. Even now, God goes before you to make a way to give you strength to reveal his love. You're surrounded with lots of prayers and God keeps you in his care. Lashawn, please accept our heartfelt condolences. May God comfort and strengthen you and your family during this difficult time. You and your family are in our prayers. May God keep his loving arms wrapped around you all. True Vine Social Services. The family wants you to know that they thank you and appreciate all your kindness and acts of love. All cards and condolences will be acknowledged at a later time. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. The obituary will be read in silence, please.
Thank you so much. We we'll now have a selection from our choir.
lost some keys and we want to know if anybody found them. Someone has lost some keys. Someone has lost some keys and we hope that they are found pretty soon. Amen. Program call for remarks. If you want to remark, can you come and stand to my right? Family request two minutes, please. Amen, amen. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm LaShawn, Junior's younger sister. First of all, on behalf of myself and my family, we want to just thank everyone for coming out and celebrating my brother's amen. life. Amen. Y'all look too sad. This That's is supposed right. to be a celebration. celebration. Right. Union wouldn't be happy amen. if he came, if he saw all these sad faces up in here. My brother loved life. He loved living life. He loved everybody that loved life. And he will be partying right now. This is way too solemn for him. So I, I just want to, first of all, thank this great church and thank this great man of God. Amen. Pastor T. Brian Hill, you are, and that's it. Amen, amen. <laughs> to this church, to our family, I thank you, we thank you, from the bottom of our hearts to yes. the depths of our souls. Yes. If I say thank you a trillion times, it wouldn't be enough. Amen. To the church for all the love, support, and guidance y'all always giving this family and being there for us through all of our times of need. Y'all know we just went through this a couple years ago with Senior, with my dad. So I just thank you all so much. And if y'all just give me two seconds, I have to thank some people who has been instrumental in my brother's life. Amen, amen. His nurse, stand up, Joanne. Amen. This woman has been my rock through everything. I love her so much. She loved our brother. She took such good care of him, not only medically, but spiritually and emotionally, she was so good to him. Couple more people back there from the dialysis center, ambulance center, that transported him. Them some, thank y'all so much. Everybody that has been in my brother's life, thank you all for understanding and allowing him to be him. Thank you, Ebenezer, and especially Pastor, for always allowing Junior to be Junior. Amen, amen. Again, I just want to thank everybody for coming out to celebrate our brother's life with us. May God bless you all, and may God keep you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I love you all so much. Amen. My name is Whitney. I'm one of his nephews. Uh, let me see where I'm going to get started at. Yeah. <laughs> So let me see. I was growing up in Calumet. I was my uncle Junior. When we outside, he, you always could find him. He was sitting in front of the fire department. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So if, if he outside, he out the rain, sleep, there's no way he gonna be at in front of the fire department. So um, we always used to mess with him like, Junior, you ain't no fireman. You ain't no fireman. He like, shut up. You know, I ain't gonna say the words that he be saying up in here. So yeah, so one day, he done whipped out a badge on us. Then they gave him, then they gave, once, once they gave him that badge, it was over. Yeah, we couldn't tell him nothing. So, and then he loved, he loved wearing hats. So one day, every, every time we get together, he was like, Man, he, he was trying to take my hat. I'm like, no, you can't have my hat. I'm going to get you one. I'm going to get you one. So I finally decided. He like, I asked him, what kind of hat you want? He was like, um, a bull's hat. So I went out to go find a bull's hat. Then he wanted what color. He wanted red, black. He wanted his name on it. So I got found the bull's hat. Went to go get his name on it and everything on it. So I was just like, I just like appreciate my uncle. He was the life of the party. So this is, I like everybody, we're going to celebrate in Junior. We love you. We're going to, um, in words of James Brown, we're going to have a, a good time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right, thank you for everybody who's coming out today. Amen. Uh, 
afternoon, everyone. Good um, afternoon. To the church, want to say thank you, um, Pastor. Um, I'm Keon. I'm the oldest nephew. Uh, junior. Uh, I would say, if you ain't believe in God, you ain't no my uncle, because he was actually a miracle child. Uh, Amen. My, uh, Amen. Erlene and Anderson Sr. Um, the things he went through um, at his time, what he was born with at the time, he was on um, the ailments, you know, what he was diagnosed with. He didn't post to see this long, a life. But he had a, a, a wonderful life. Yeah. Praise God. Like he said, life of the party. Um, like my auntie said, he wouldn't want to see any sad faces because if it was roles reversed, he'd be the happiest person in this in this church right now. Amen, amen. And celebrating you to the fullest. So amen. I just want you to remember that um, going forward, remembering um, my uncle, the brother, cousin, friend. Like he was just he was just a lively person. I always loved being with him. I've seen him do things that. Some of the younger generation didn't see, like I said, born in West Calumet, going, I've seen them at the, at the stove. We all had our little assignments, you know, staying out, seeing him, my auntie Sean, he was at the stove actually cooking at one point. Little kids got the plates and stuff out. Some of us mixed the Kool-Aid up, but he was at the <laughs> stove cooking and Again, he was doing things, like he said, that he told my grandmother and grandfather that he would not be able to do. Um, honorary fireman, he, that was, he, you could Amen. not, Amen. he would not Amen. lay that down. Amen. If he was not a fireman in East Chicago, Indiana, <laughs> somebody told y'all different. <laughs> somebody told y'all different. Um, I do have a few other words to say, and I'll wrap it up real quick. It goes, you'll never know how much. I love you, you'll never know how much. I love you, words could never explain what it is my heart feels or what I wish I could say. Saying I love you sounds too simple. Hmm. Saying, saying you mean the, the world to me doesn't say enough. Mm -hmm. There is no definition that could truly describe love. Love is bigger than four letters. Far more beautiful than it appears because all of this and more, you'll never know how much I love you. Amen. And I believe if my uncle could have expressed himself, that's what he would express to all of us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. My name is Joanne. And I'm Jasmine. I was junior's nurse um, and honorary sister of LaShawn. Um, I just wanted to thank you, first of all, LaShawn, for taking such amazing care of Junior because there was nothing that he ever wanted for, literally nothing. And boo, <laughs> we had to go through some struggles with him some days, but we always made it. But I wanted to leave everybody on a good note about Junior. When I first met Junior, he was very shy with me, and I tried to get him to open up. And all it took was one day of me walking in, and he was watching Peppa Pig, and I started talking in a little British accent like Peppa Pig, and he thought it was hysterical, and it just, there was a bond right there. Um, anybody who ever met Junior in this world couldn't help but love him, could not help but love him. And I loved him like he was my little brother, you know, even though he was, he was older and, and I had just met him. He was just the sweetest thing. But um, sometimes, you know, in his nursing care, we had to do some things that weren't so pleasant for him. And, uh, you know, Boo had my back, Jasmine had my back, and... We got those things done, but one of the things I would always bribe him with, because this is, this is Junior, um, he loved gummy worms and gummy bears. Mm. 
So I would bring him bags of gummy worms and gummy bears on his days that I had to do his treatments, and I'd tell him, if you let me do your treatment, I got this whole bag of gummy worms for you. So of course he'd let me do his treatments. So I had seen him on a Tuesday, gave him his bag of gummy worms, I came back on Thursday. And I said, hey, I got another bag of gummy worms for you, you gonna let me do your treatment? He said, nope. And he grabbed a bag and he said, I still got some left from last time. <laughs> you little stinker. And that, my heart just melted, I laughed. Believe me, I had to coerce him into like, I'm gonna make you a fire shirt, we're gonna get to get it done that day, but learn my lesson and put him in a Ziploc baggie from that day on. But Junior was just somebody that, like I said, when you met him, you could not help but love him. You could not. So I want to let you know, all these years, it was my pleasure to take care of him. Junior made me a better person. Amen. And I will miss him, and I love him, but I know where he's at, and I'll one day see him again, as we all will. Amen. Thank you so much. And I want to acknowledge, real quick, I do want to acknowledge Jasmine. Um, and she's going to speak, but um, Jasmine, I couldn't have done it without you, too. Honestly, every week faithfully right there helping me and, and doing for me. So thank you and I love you so much. Amen. Amen. I know I only loan Junior a short period of time. But like Joanne said, when you meet them, you just you just fall in love with them just off the bat. I'm a mess being cussed out by him. <laughs> 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 no, nah, nitty, you can't do it. Fool, get away from me. Leave me alone. Don't touch me. <laughs> I'm a mess that. And since. He went on to be with the Lord. I'm, I just been lost. I'm gonna eventually get back in the field, but it's a, the things that Junior done can't nobody else do it. He the only one that can cuss me out. And then turn around and say, "I love you, Jazz." <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I just want to say, I'm gonna miss him. I'm gonna miss him. I love you, Junior. You're in a better place. You ain't gonna have to suffer no more. Don't do any of that. I love you. Sean, the whole Jackson family, I love y'all. And y'all did an awesome job. Amen. 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 Made me all nervous now. It's okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm um, the the favorite nephew and the favorite cousin, Wayne. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> I don't. Even, I, I really don't know where to start and where to begin. But it, it's it's been something that um, I've been thinking about for the past week, and um, I don't know if anybody else has been thinking about it. And I just wanted to. It's like something that's been on my mind and something that's been on my heart. We. Just we, everybody in here, we, um, you know, we complain about our jobs, we complain about our bills, we complain about when we feel good, when we don't feel good, things like that. And um, in my short 34 years of, of being around Junior and watching him, all the things he went through, he never complained. He, he never complained about having to go and get diabetes or however you, you know, dialysis, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. He had diabetes and dialysis. Like, I don't know, he just, it's just something that just, just, I really been thinking about. Like, he's just, he never complained. And the things we, the things that we complain about is just so minor to what was going That's on right. in his life. Mm -hmm. and, but at the same time, like, I never really noticed it and thought about it until I got older. His life was normal. It, it probably was normal to other people, but it was normal. You know, he, I remember in the 90s and the early 2000s, he used to walk around East Chicago. He used to walk around Cayman all the time. And me being so young, I was so nervous. Like, how he gonna get back home? Like, is he gonna know what to do? But nobody ever bothered him. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's almost like like they knew, like if 
he did anything, if anybody did anything to him, God would punish them. Like, nobody ever bothered him, and I never really thought about that until I got older. But, like, he really was a, a joy. It really was fun to be around. And, like, everybody just, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but just, just look at your obituary. Just look at the front page of it. He just got those, like, big baby eyes. <laughs> like, he just, just love it. Like, I, I'm really, really going to miss him. He was a joy to be around. And um, today, I, I'm smiling because this is, like, the most peaceful I've seen my uncle in a long time. And, Amen. and I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy he's going back with his mother and his father, his sisters. I'm jealous he's going to get grandma biscuits before I do. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. But I, I, I really do, you know, I love you, uncle. And, you know, he always going to be in all of our hearts. Amen. 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 Now we're going to have some short remarks from Pastor Cobb. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, amen. We thank and praising God for Junior. Amen. Junior was a amen. He was excited all the time. There wasn't nothing bored about Junior. Amen. And I'm just sitting back there reminiscing on some things. Amen. About Junior many times. When you when you when he found a friend, he found a friend. Amen. And, and he stuck with you too. Amen. He stuck by you the many time when we was out there in Cagamet. Amen. I think on several occasions. Amen. On Sunday morning. That's, amen. We look out the window. He out there. <laughs> he out there waiting. Waiting for us to get up, get ready for Sunday school. Get ready for church. He already ready. Amen. I think at one incident my wife said he was out there washing my car <laughs> with no soap. <laughs> with no soap. And then I was back there thinking about it. I said, come many times we was in church, amen, and we are praying or uh, you know, uh, we tearing. Oh, he, he get to say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and then people out that eye, over the eye, see who looking. <laughs> then go back and thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Amen, you know, and many times, many times we went out to eat. Uh, so, so, so Junior, amen, going to be missed. Amen. Then we went, we lost contact, contact with him. He was always on our mind. Always on our mind. And, and my wife just said, I got to find him. I got to find him. I got to find out where he at. Amen. It's because he, he, he had that special place in our heart. Amen. He believed in having church. And he knew how to pray too. Yeah. Amen. I think we was with him what, about a month ago. Amen. About, about a month ago. And we just talking, we sang, and you know, he likes to sing. You know, he, he get around church, folks. He want to sing now, you know. Ain't no telling what he was saying before that. <laughs> but he get around, come on, let's sing. Sings up his soul. Oh, in the midst of we sang, and he stopped. Up, 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 up. Come on, let's pray, let's pray. <laughs> Amen. I said, go ahead and pray, Junior. Go ahead and pray. Amen. And he knew how to pray. Amen. Do other pray. And we just thank God. Amen. We're going to miss him for that reason. Amen. We never know. We never know. Amen. When we're going to leave him. Amen. But it behooves us to be ready when we go. Hallelujah. Amen. And as the young man said, that, that nobody messed with him. Nobody messed with him because he was that type of person. And we surely going to miss him. Amen. We're going to miss him. But we're excited about him too. Amen. we happy about him. I hear a lot of old saints that they, they say they go and then they come back. And they'll say, I didn't want to come back. I wanted to stay where I was at. Amen. And you get to that place in paradise where God, with Abraham, Isaac, and all the apostles, when you get to that place, you don't want to come back here. Amen. You want to come back here. And so, amen. We're grateful for Junior. Amen. And I know, I know if I was up here and Junior was in church, now he said he wanted to pray at first and then he wanted to sing and you know Julia had something else I love it. how did he used to do that shout <laughs> <laughs> Julia get that shout <laughs> so I don't know about you all but musician come on and give me some drum 
Come on and give yourself credit. If Junior was up here, Junior be shouting. Amen. And that's what we got the church for. Yeah, I'm well. Come on with it. Celebration for Junior. After the choir has rendered their last selection, the next speaking preaching voice you will hear will be Reverend T. Brian Hill. Thank you.
come on, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We do give God honor and we do give him praise. Well, I believe that if Junior was to give his testimony, even right now, it would be that the Lord has been good to him. The Lord has blessed him in so many ways. To this great family of whom I have ministered to over the years. I've had the honor of being able to pastor many of you to give God honor and praise for you. I want to recognize the great job that this entire family has done over all these years. Over these many years, I've I went to visit Junior in the hospitals or to many of your homes. And I got to see the care that he's received, the love that he's received. I've seen the work of some of the, the nursing staff and stuff that has been here. I've seen the work of, of the technicians that have been in the hospital rooms given him dialysis. Many of the nursing and many of the doctors that has cared for Junior over these great many years. And I, I give God honor and praise for all of you. Junior was one of the first people that I met when I came to East Chicago. Everyone affectionately then called him fireman. You could often see him sitting outside the fire station. And it seems like everyone who would come in contact with Junior would somehow fall in love with him. He seems to bring out the best in people. Even strangers. My brother and I had a service station in East Chicago. And he would come through at times. And we couldn't help but fall in love with him too. There was something special about Junior. I believe it was this. God placed Junior amongst us yes, yes. that he might be a blessing to each and every one of us. Yes. You see, God often measures how well we treat one another to how we love him. So when we see those that is often described in the scriptures as the least of them, those are the very ones that God will bless you by being a blessing to them. Junior was always a very special soul. He loved his pastor. He loved the church. And when I say the church, I'm not talking about just New Ebenezer. He loved God. I thank God for him. I thank God for his life. I thank God for his spirit. I can honestly say I've never seen i never seen Junior get angry up until about these last six months. <laughs> I was at the hospital one time. He was over at community. And he was in intensive care. 
But that time his backside had gotten real sore. And when I was getting ready to leave, the nurse came back and said, Pastor, can you please come back and, and help us get Junior up? Because he doesn't want to get up. So I said, okay, I came back and sat in the room. And the nurse said, Junior, we want, we want you to sit up on the side of the bed. And Junior said with real force, no! <laughs> I said, wow! <laughs> and then I, I said, come on, Junior, let, let's pray. And I prayed with him. And then I said, Junior, I want you to sit up on the side of the bed for me. And so the nurse said, come on, we'll help you up, Junior, we'll help you up, and began to push him. Junior said, no, leave me alone. And then he mustered up the strength, pulled himself up, scooted himself around, and then he sat up on the side of the bed. I, I took a picture of it. And I sent it to some of his family members. He hadn't sat up for some time, but he sat up that day. I just thank God for him. Thank God for his spirit. He reminds us that it is the very things that we often look at that are simple, that are the most important in our lives. For many of us, we're never going to be a millionaire. We're never going to live in the biggest house they ever made. We're never going to drive the finest cars that were ever made. Junior found happiness in the simple things of life. His nurse said a, a bag of gummies would bring a smile to his face. I've seen it many times as these family members would come to the hospital, spend time with him in the hospital. How happy he was. The simple things in life. He always makes sure that he tell you that he loves you. And those are the things that are so important. I can stand here and talk about Junior for the next two or three hours. But I have a word for you. It comes out of the gospel according to Matthew, out of the fifth chapter. I'll begin reading at the 13th verse. It reads like this. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out, trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. But on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men yeah. that they may see your good works yes. and glorify your Father in heaven. Yeah. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this preaching moment. Yeah. We pray now that you'll open our, our ears make our hearts receptive to the word of God, knowing that the word of God has never lost its power nor its strength. And even today, it is able to deliver from the utmost to the guttermost. So we give you honor and we give you praise on today. We lift this family up in their hour of need. They need your peace and comfort in a mighty way. Many of their hearts are heavy. 
Many of their eyes are full of tears. But you say the day would come in which you would wipe all the tears from our eyes. And as we look forward to that great day when all the saints of God will be together and we'll glorify your name and we'll give you honor and praise. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Listen, on the day I was at the hospital, that was the day that Junior passed away, often what happens is the Lord will give me a word at that very moment. And the very thing I thought about when I was there by the bed praying with some of the family members was the life that he had lived that it was indeed a life that touched so many others. Junior was indeed the kind of saint that, that did not hide his life or hide his light. He let his light shine. And because he allowed his light to shine, each and every one of us was affected by that light. God often put people in the world like Junior. And he uses them to be a blessing to us. The Bible asks the question, how can you say that you love God and hate your brother and sister? There is no such thing. Junior was the embodiment of what love is. He loved everyone. And everyone loved him. That's why his nephew said, Junior could walk down the street at any hour of the day, any hour of the night, and nobody was going to do nothing to Junior. Why? Because Junior was the light that God put into the world for us to witness. You see, through his life, you can understand what love really is. Junior was not a man that went after the things of the world. He was not a man that sought the things that many of us seek after. A simple man who enjoyed simple things and thought that it was the things that many of us may not think much of turned out to be what was most important. One of those things was this. He wanted you to know that he loved you. He didn't just tell me that he loved me. He would tell folk all over this church that he loved them. He told his, his family members that he loved them. Because he knew that in the end, love is the only thing that matters. <laughs> I tell them this. Especially we as, as black folks. For the vast majority of us, we don't grow up in families that have great wealth, great assets. When our, our loved ones pass on, we don't worry about the inheritance. We worry about how we're going to put them away. That's the way it is for many of our families. That's why you have to take pleasure in being able to recognize the things that are most important in life. Because for many of us, and for many of those out there in the world, the only way that they are going to see Jesus is going to be through us. So 
But when, G, when, when Junior would say, I love you, when Junior would be kind to others, what he was doing is letting the world see the light that God had placed within him. And that light that was placed within him, he allowed us all to see it. And because we saw it, we all have been affected and we all have been changed by it. I venture to guess some of y'all in this family right now, because of the example that Junior has set, has learned to tell your own children, I love you a little bit more. I bet you some of you all in this family right now, because of the example that Junior has set, has learned to say thank you because he showed you what kind words can do. It is his life and the way that he has lived. The example that he has been to the world has been a blessing to us all. Listen, I ain't worried about Junior. Everything is all right with Junior. You hear me? Everything is all right with Junior. If there's something that we need to be worried about, it is us. Those that are still here. Those that are, are still alive. Because if you really want to take the example of Junior, this is what you have to take from his life. Why you still uh, get breath in your body. Why the blood is still running warm in your veins. Give your life unto God while you have an opportunity because no one knows what tomorrow is going to bring. And I know many times we believe because we're young we got time. But I often tell you guys at these services I bury as many young folk as I do old folk today. So that means this. When you hear the Lord calling, when he knocks at your door, give your hand unto the Lord. Put your faith and your trust in him. And he's promised us that the time is going to come yes. when all the saints of God yes. will be together again. Yes. That means this. For all of us who love the Lord, we'll see Junior again. Yes. This is not the end. Yes. This is just simply a transition. Yes. And not only will we see Junior, but we're going to see all of those who love the Lord. All of those who've given their lives unto the Lord. We're going to see all of them. I don't know about you, but I, I can tell you this. I got a mama on the other side who loved the Lord. And I'm looking forward to the day that I see her again. I got a brother and a, a sister over on the other side. I hope to see them again. I, I got a daddy that I don't know much about how he loved the Lord. I don't know if I'll see him, but you know what? That's left up to the Lord. I'll see when I get there. But right now, we got to give God praise while we can. I tell the world, I thank him and I praise him for his goodness and for his grace. Today, we come to acknowledge God's goodness in the life of Junior. God's goodness on how he not only blessed them, but how he blessed each and every one of us. If I'll take a line from his life, that line will be this. I'll trust the Lord with all of my might. I'll trust him with all of my mind and with all of my soul. That's how he lived his life. And that's the example that he gives to each and every one of us. Listen, I know we got some younger Jacksons here in the house. Let me tell you, 
You've had some great examples in your family. You've had some great examples of living for the Lord. Live for him now. Follow the examples of those who have gone before you. Give your life unto the Lord. Knowing he will never fail you. And even when the time comes that you have to close your eyes on this side of glory. And let me be clear. All of us are going to close our eyes on this side of glory at one time or another. That you will have the assurance of knowing, just like Junior, all is well. All is well. Let us bless the name of the Lord. Put your hands together as we thank God for all that he has done. We ask the directors if they would come forth as we get ready to make our way to the cemetery. We can have, please have someone to help with the flowers. Please come. Please come and help with the flowers. We're going to ask all of the pallbearers, if you'll line up here at my right, all of the pallbearers to come and line up at my right hand. LaShawn, do you want to leave the plants here until you come back and then take the plants? Could you please just leave the plants here? Yeah. And she can get them when we come back. If you will, stand to your feet. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that in the latter days upon this earth, long after the skin worm shall destroy this body. In my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself and not another. For the Lord has gained, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 